<laughs> hello my loves hello my loves hey everybody this open relationship hey daddy hey mama what nothing it just busted in didn't it what the whole the whole it's a you live that's what it did i wasn't ready for it baby all right i had a little bit more to do and then it just bust up in there and said let's go get it that's how i did what's going on y'all so listen today's show is what is the title daddy tell them are you living your own life or someone else's expectations tell them how we got here well you know what so we were having a conversation right about what people think is right and what people believe is wrong and not what well, would we say morally it could be morally or just what people think is right and what people think is wrong. You know, everybody has their way of doing things and they want to share them with you. So we're trying to figure out, are you one of those people that you can hear what someone says, but ultimately you're going to do what's best for you or are you plugged into what everybody else is saying and do what is best for them? in terms of what they think about you should do for yourself. You, you better believe in it. That's it. Believe. Are you living your own life or are you living somebody else's expectations? Like, go go do what your heart because imagine all your life you're living somebody else's expectation and not your own. That's got to be an unfair ride and an unpleasant ride mm -hmm. when you're living somebody else's expectations. Are you living somebody ex somebody else's expectation when it comes down to relationships? Are you living somebody else's expectations when you're talking about religion? Mm. Or are you believe in what you believe in or what somebody else told you? Come on. You should believe in. Come on. Yeah. When it comes to that religion thing though, Daddy, I think that's so conditioned because when I'm on stage oftentimes and I, people say, I'm a Christian. And then I'll say, well, what is that? And then they'll look at me like, bitch, I didn't come here for that. For that. But you said that's what you are, but what is it? And I think, again, living somebody else's expectation. You don't even know what you signed up for. Because it's a very interesting state of affairs that we live in, where the depiction of Jesus, everyone knows, was not or not everyone knows but as we've come to find out was a rendering of what was the gentleman who created it um his lover what's the man that threw the picture was it what no, no. Was, it, was it michael angelo, angelo. or da vinci one da of the two mm -hmm. that was his lover come on so we depict him as Jesus. Picasso, they say. Okay. Thank, Thank you baby. so much. Picasso. So he's going to paint his lover as Jesus. However, in you, when you look at the First Testament, Jesus mm. was Jewish. John the Baptist, these individuals were Jewish. But now you have individuals that have a problem and think they have a problem with Jews, but Jesus was Jewish. Make it make sense. And then you got a problem with black people. But then when you look at the coin that depicted Jesus, like I think it was 3 AD or something like that, it was the rendering of a black man who appeared to have an afro. So you've got all these people disliking one another, but they have depictions of one another Come on. as their God. So who do you believe in as two said? Who say? do you turn to okay. when I need love? Because when you're living somebody else's expectation, oftentimes you don't even do the research for yourself to find out the truth. Hey, you're on with Monique and Sydney. Who's this and where you're calling from? This is Candy Johnson, and I'm calling from uh, New Jersey. Hey, Candy. Hey, Candy Johnson from New Jersey. Talk to us, baby. Hey, Monique, I, I'm, I'm trying to act cool like I ain't all excited because I'm not one of those starstruck fans, but I am excited to, that I got to to you. I definitely uh, am more than a fan. I have all 
always had respect for your art and the way you carried yourself as a big girl because I struggled with my weight. Mm -hmm. And um, I love the way you stay jazzy, you know? And um, since this incident that I saw uh, with the uh, Netflix issue was how I got back really, really just following your work in, because I don't, I really don't follow people, you know, as mm -hmm. friends. Um, I love their work. I respect them. But, you know, I'm an, I'm, a, I'm an artist myself, so I'm doing, usually busy doing my own thing. But I do care when I see people being mistreated in the industry because I know the pain. Mm -hmm. I, I, I've i been blacklisted myself for, for making the decision that, hey, I'm talented. I don't need to uh, show my body and, and disrespect myself in any kind of way or accept anything mm -hmm. um, just to get a place in this so-called... Uh, you know, of things. So I wanted to tell you this. Um, I have some great ideas that I would love to uh, get in contact with you later about. I love your show. I've been promoting it like crazy. Um, I, I will be honest, though, I haven't stopped Netflix because that's all I watch. But I do do. <laughs> and this is a suggestion I want to give you about that issue with Netflix. Okay, people who aren't willing to boycott it completely, what I have been doing is watching the hell out of just your movie, your uh, special, and when they see the buzz coming to your, what's already on there, they don't see that you're worth them paying you with your work. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Currently, you're already worth it because you're the queen for sure. But I'm saying they don't see the, you know, the recent buzz and that you're worth it because you're still relevant. You didn't have to ever struggle to be relevant because you've always been relevant. And, and the best, is, as far as I know, is for a female comedian. Well, that is my opinion. Well, we can so, tell based upon how you get down, which was the topic of the show, was do you do you essentially... Or do you kind of march to the beat of someone else's drum? And I can tell you, you beat, you, <laughs> you, you walk. You know, just because when you see people to say, have her get to what she's trying to say, she's saying it. Mm -hmm. We're just not listening. And sometimes, y'all, we're so quick to jump without listening. She was saying it the whole time she was talking. I do my own thing and not somebody else's expectations. So even when she said, Monique, I still watch Netflix. But the way I do it for you is I just watch your specials and I watch your part, even though they still getting that money, baby. But I understand what it is that she's trying to say. And again, I dig people that say, I'm going to do it my way. I'm going to march to the beat of my own drum. If don't nobody else hear the beat, I'm good with that. If no one else hears the beat, I'm good with that. I don't care what it's going to look like. I don't care what my boys are going to say. Even if I got to leave the environment, I want something different. So that's really, y'all, what this show is about. Are you willing to ride your own ride? Not what somebody else think you should be riding. Because you only got that one ride that we know of. Hey, you're on with Monique and Sydney. Who's this and where you calling from? Hi, this is Candy Johnson. I called earlier. Hey, Candy. Hey, we got cut off, but I was explaining my side and how I was showing support to your to your personal uh, podcast. I mean, to uh, Moni for a while. Yes, ma'am. Um, as well, I and so um, I afterwards watching your video, I saw that you were saying that you don't get paid for us watching your show. No, ma'am, baby. <laughs> oh, I thought it would help to bring more viewers, view, um, viewers to your specials, then they would know that you, you know, that people are still um, really wanting to uh, get get material from you. Well, you know, I'll say this: they can be aware of that, but what they will do with that is kind of up to them. I'll give you an example. Stalin, Joseph Stalin made a statement. He said, it doesn't matter who comes out and votes. 
What matters is who counts those votes. So it doesn't matter that you're watching in the world and they know that well, you're watching. Only, that what, people are watching your stuff right. because they don't want to pay, right? What, what matters is how they receive that. And when it becomes important to them, then folks of color, women, will get a chance to reap those benefits. But there are a lot of uh, tangible and, and empirical data that they receive justifying um, the value, the eyes that have, happen to be uh, that are of color that are watching programs, but they squelch that down because there's a high level of comfortability that what people don't know is sponsors are interested in white people knowing that they have this product for them, despite the fact that there may be black viewers who are watching. So, you know, you doing what you're doing is much appreciated, but it's kind of like, um, again, when they don't the give you... Because it's not really uh, being recognized as such. Right. It's the reason why they couldn't give Moni any definitives in reference to why she shouldn't get what Amy Schumer received and how come they took the assumptive approach as to what hey, they believe. That's Amy Schumer. I don't even know who the fuck that is. But when I did, <laughs> she was. I was like, what the hell? And that really made me get on the bandwagon and, and, and um, say, hey, this is definitely clear-cut racism. And um, it, 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 it just, it, I'm, I'm proud of you, Monique. I am definitely proud of you for taking a stand. I got your back in the way that I can't. You understand? Yes. And uh, I, I, I do promote. What I do is promote your show. I got almost uh, 50 websites. I promote your show on every website platform I have. On Dead TV Network. I'm definitely going to be sharing and promoting your show so that we can get not just pull traffic from Netflix, but bring traffic to you, period. We love you, baby. We deserve it. And I love y'all relationship. And it's so beautiful. Y'all are definitely a beautiful example for our black people. And I am very sad to know Oprah and Tyler with all that money didn't even want to pay you for promotion. when you will uh, deserve it. And, and they have the ability to do it and just did that crap about I don't just give out money. If you're giving to charity, that's what the hell you're doing. Well, you know that song, Candy, they say it ain't over to the fat lady sing. Right. I ain't sung yet, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't sung yet. Even right now, in the midst of it, in the midst of it, it makes me smile because I know what we're standing for. They spoke in reference to with all the traveling and all the things that he did, it was a great degree of loneliness. Yes. Because you're doing a lot of things that are on the camera and you're meeting people, but then as soon as that shoot is over, you're by yourself in the country, you gotta go back and decompress and all of those things. And I would assume that it was some top that said it was lonely there. Mm. Because you think being, you know, Oprah does events, Oprah and her 100 closest friends. Well, all of us know in all reality, you can't main a 100 close friendship. Come on. So there's a level of fantasy that is sold that even they buy into. Yes. That in these moments, we got to love them enough to say we won't buy into the fantasy because we're going to sit right here in reality waiting for you so that when you get ready to deal with what is real, because you try to recreate on the big screen realities. You got a big black man dressing up like a big black woman. And when you see that all of these things are, are, are transpiring where you're supposed to appreciate this woman on the big screen, why not just do that same thing in real life when you have a black woman that can do that in Oprah? Well, because when you do a show that says, are you living your own life or someone else's expectations? The expectation of those people is to do something different. 
the expectation is they're beneath you. So you don't even have to deal with that because they're beneath you. That's what we expect you to do. But for them to be real folk and say, a wrong was done and we've got to fix wrong. But that's not what is expected of them. What's expected is you throw them niggas under the bus, baby, and we keep going. That's what we do. But it's your ride. And prefacing it with You've analyzed your situation well enough to have a hold on it in a way that someone else may just rush to a decision because they've always been told this isn't how you should do it. And they're giving you a decision. We're always looking at it as it doesn't have to be our answer. It just has to be the right answer. Mm -hmm. And when you've analyzed it for yourself and you realize it's the right answer, Despite the fact that it's not the common answer, despite the fact that it's not what people would look at and say, that's the most popular way to go. Well, the way you're designed may not be how the average person is designed. And oftentimes you have people that are extraordinary, but they're wrapped in what one sit in the ordinary package. Mm. And you have to decide for yourself it's that moment in your life where you get a chance to show what's extraordinary by not making an ordinary decision.